Hi, this is Pat Moorhead. We are live in Las Vegas at AWS reInvent 2022 inside the Dell Technologies booth. Daniel, it is hopping here. People are eating, drinking, and being merry. And we're watching and waiting and yes. finishing all these videos, but we're excited. Ours will come because there's a lot of stuff to talk about here inside the Dell booth on the 6.5 pad, and it is good to be back at AWS reInvent. Yeah, it really is, and how this show has changed. I mean, a decade ago, it was pretty much AWS and their, and their uh, public cloud partners, and now you have enterprise going to the cloud, cloud going to the enterprise, you have hybrid cloud, you have multi-cloud, which we have an incredible guest. How are you? Great. Good to see like you. to be here too. Yeah. yeah. Las Vegas. Who thought we'd be sitting here talking multi-cloud and EKS anywhere? Well, I'll tell you what, it's the hotness right now, so everybody's talking about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a big thing. It's a big topic. And Bob Ganley, we're excited to have you here. New to the show, right? Yes, First sir. time on the 6.5. First, time. First timer. Hopefully not the last. Hopefully not. Um, Give us the quick introduction. Talk a little bit about your work and your role at Dell. Sure, absolutely. So I'm a senior consultant in our future of IT organization. And what that means is we're looking at the software technologies that are helping customers innovate, create their innovation. And that's really all about modern applications and how organizations are modernizing their approach to delivering value through software. And um, I have a background as a software engineer, actually. So I started on the engineering side of things. Uh, now my role is more to help tell that story, to help people understand how Dell Technologies is helping deliver that value through software today, which is interesting. I've actually been a software guy in a hardware company for a lot of my career. Well, I think it's great. And Jeff Clark talks a lot about how the increasing the resources into software development not that Dell's getting out of hardware, certainly, but really ramping up those percentages of engineers for software. And it is important, particularly when you look at hybrid cloud and multi-cloud. And, you know, we've seen the mechanism for applications move from kind of monolithic, mainframe, mini, uh, to VMs, to containers. And that's exactly what you're bringing to the table with EKS, uh, basically on Dell. Can you talk a little bit about the announcement? What did you announce? What is it and what can customers do? Yeah, absolutely. So you nailed it, Pat, which is that application architectures are changing, right? From monoliths to microservices. Right. Microservices are delivered in containers. Those containers need to be orchestrated and Kubernetes has won the competition in terms of orchestration tools. Now, what that means is that organizations need to figure out a way to bring Kubernetes and containers into their operation. So what's interesting is Kubernetes has evolved from a pure open source project curated by the CNCF right. to a much more mature market where you're seeing now commercial distributions of Kubernetes. Instead of organizations downloading the open source bits, trying to create and integrate that platform right. for themselves, they're saying, hey, let me work with a partner that can provide that stuff in a more turnkey fashion. And that's exactly what Amazon has done with EKS. What's interesting is EKS is their commercial distribution that runs inside Amazon Web Services. Right. What they've done is taken that exact same distribution, the same bits, the same software, and made that available to deploy on premises. Now, the way they do that. On Dell infrastructure. On Dell infrastructure. Yeah, okay. And that's what we're here for, yes. right? The way they do that is with this offering called EKS Anywhere. So EKS Anywhere actually is the mechanism to install, configure EKS on Dell infrastructure. Right. So what we've done now is take that and create packages that allow organizations to very quickly stand up of modern applications environment on Dell infrastructure in their data center. Right, that's exciting. Yeah. So you kind of started to allude to it, but talk a little more about this because we've identified the macro trend is the prem workloads are going to be around for a long time. And in fact, sure. they're growing. Yeah. And that's why, you know, ultimately we need 
flexibility to migrate software, data, you know, all the infrastructure between cloud and prem. So this is what EKS enables. It enables it from Dell's infrastructure to AWS and of course EKS Anywhere designed really for what's multi-cloud, right? So yes. talk about how Dell is sort of wrapping this up, making this presentable and, and why people come to Dell for it. Right. Well, the fact of the matter is every organization, maybe every project team needs to have the right approach to how they're going to implement this underlying infrastructure. So what we've done is worked with several of the different Dell infrastructure offers to include PowerFlex, VxRail, and PowerStore to configure validated architectures for the running of EKS Anywhere on-prem. So with PowerFlex, which you've heard a lot about hopefully already, yes. which we can deploy in public cloud or on-premises, we can now support EKS Anywhere in a couple of different configurations. So one is uh, a hyper-converged configuration where both the storage and the compute are on an individual node. And we can do that with um, uh, uh, bare metal. And we can also configure a solution with vSphere. So we have both a two-tier solution where you can have the compute and the storage scale separately as well as that HCI solution right. from a PowerFlex perspective. Also, we've got a VxRail option. So VxRail allows you to do similar, which is with uh, VxRail, of course, you can use vSphere. You can use the underlying vSphere um, software-defined storage right. with vSAN, or you can use PowerStore as a dedicated, purpose-built software infrastructure for your persistent volumes for EKS Anywhere. No, that's great. And I'm actually impressed with the amount of permutations you have because each one of those takes a pretty big investment to qualify and make sure it can run and now for you know the next X years. So clarifying question here. We're looking at in the corporate data center, Colo, Edge, pretty much any, by the way, and of course, on AWS infrastructure. Yes. Okay, so if I stand back, um, I think I know the answer, but I want to hear it from you because you're educating people on this and I don't, I don't think we're the, I don't think we're the experts, by the way. So expert right there. To the CIO and let's say to lead compute or lead infrastructure, what is the benefit? What are they getting? Is it reduced cost? Is it increased revenue? Is it faster cycle time? Somewhere in between, what is it? Sure, well, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say you're a telecom service provider. Hypothetically, of course. Hypothetically, a telecom <laughs> service provider. And you want to provide local mobile phone apps that your telecom customers can provide to their customers. So they can download those apps, run them on their phone. You've got proprietary algorithms that you want to run and you have to run from a compliance perspective in your data center, right. but you'd love to serve up the mobile interface from a local data center, let's say an Amazon data center. Right. Wouldn't it be great if you could have consistent infrastructure on your premises in your data center where you can keep that data under control and in compliance and in a public cloud location so that you can actually run the same code, you can operate it the same way. So think about the capability of running uh, containerized workloads on-prem, containerized workloads in the cloud, and have them provide a very consistent operating environment that gives you the right level of service for that local customer while providing compliance on-prem. Yeah, by the way, interesting you brought in compliance as a benefit, I wouldn't have necessarily brought that in one in myself because with consistency you typically either can do more with the same resources or do the same for less but I, I love I love the compliance piece yeah yeah it's big well, yeah it kind of always lends itself too to really what were they trying to accomplish with containers yeah. right and the whole idea was that flexibility right consistency across you know multi clouds telco cloud public cloud you know your own private data centers is be able to take a workload build out the, you know, and move it in the code, the consistency in the code, consistency in the experience. That's what this is all about. So 
I mean, as, as far as I see, makes a lot of sense. How do you get the adoption? Like, is it Dell's current customers um, that are going to be the first buyers? I mean, obviously you've been doing this a little while. Um, or are you seeing public cloud, more public consumers coming to Dell looking for solutions? And uh, la last question, I promise. Okay, cool. Actually, we see both, which is Dell Technologies, we stand in the corner with our customer as they're making technology decisions. So whether that be they're looking for, you know, a purpose-built architecture where they want to use uh, Power Edge with Power Max in the data center and control the individual components, or they may be looking for a more turnkey solution like we're talking about with PowerFlex and VxRail and Amazon EKS, for example. Um, whether the customer is looking for that, you know, supporting the open source bits from the CNCF or a commercial right. distribution like EKS, we will stand in the corner with them in making that choice. So what we see is that there are customers that come to us and say, EKS is where it's at for us. Right. And we've, we've played with EKS. We've done our dev and test in Amazon, and now we're ready to Deploy. implement on-prem. That's right. Can we do that? And we say absolutely, and absolutely with choice in terms of that underlying architecture. And I want to bring in one last thing here, which is that it doesn't end just with the uh, uh, you know day one standing up of this, but also the ability to do um, non-disruptive updates of the software on the infrastructure from a day two perspective, but then also think about DevOps automation and the ability to now try to automate lots of steps of your configuration and get to a place where um, you're using tools like Ansible and Terraform to configure your infrastructure. Now, we can support that on-premises right. and those same tools and those same scripts and modules can then work in a public cloud environment as well. So we go you know, all the way from sort of day zero, standing that infrastructure up, helping customers get up and running quickly to day two and beyond right. to make sure that those operations are efficient. Right, so Bob, I want to thank you for coming on the show. And what I really appreciate is you filled in yet another piece of the multi-cloud journey. One is taking enterprise software that's on-prem and running it in AWS. Uh, like on PowerFlex, you announced that as well. Now we're going the opposite direction, which is taking AWS EKS Anywhere, which is in the public cloud and running it on Dell infrastructure in multiple forms, pretty much anywhere offering consistency. So. Thank you for coming on. You're welcome. Thank you for your time. Excellent. So this is Dan and Pat with the 6.5. I want to thank you for tuning in. If you liked what you heard, hit that subscribe button. If you want to give us feedback, you know where to find us. We spend way too much time on social media, but we are here, 6.5, live, on the road, at AWS reInvent, in the Dell Technologies booth. Have a great morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are on the planet. Take care.